It's interesting looking at the coverage in Spain, looking ahead to the World Cup. It's all about who is going to start up front. Basically, mm. Lopetegui's got a choice of three. He's either got Aspas, he's got... Um, Costa. Costa, and I've got the third one. Rodrigo. Yeah, it's, I mean, you look at some of the choices other teams have. It's, it's pretty slim pickings, if yeah. you ask me. Uh, Aspas, as great as he has been uh, uh, last season uh, in La Liga. Rodrigo, I'm not sure, gets in any of the other top teams. Sure. And that leaves you with Costa, who for so long we've been talking about somehow he doesn't gel with the rest of this team. So it's a real concern. And I don't see MD winning a World Cup without a real proven goal scorer in the team. And I don't see one of them. But Spain, Spain did exactly that, didn't they? Before when they won the World well, Cup. They, you know, you well, they just, com playing, they, they just completely outpossessed teams, but they have to do it again. It's not going to be easy. Shai, who would you have? Uh, I think you'd have to go with Diego Costa just as a, as a proven goal scorer. But I, I'm with Steve on that. As good as he's been for, for club, it's just not clicked for country with, with Diego Costa. And, and it's a concern. Yeah, Marcotti. Who's your vote for? Who, who do you think is going to start? Is it, is it given that it's going to be Costa? I think it's, it'll probably will be Costa, but uh, certainly my understanding is he likes the fact that he has three di very different strikers. He likes the fact that there are other people that he can, uh, he can plug into that centre forward position. Obviously, we've seen Marco Asensio play there mm. uh, in the past as well. Um, I think what we might get from him is sort of... Uh, a horses for courses approach, you know, depending on the uh, opposition, depending on the type of game it is, he might pick one of those four. At the moment, at the minute, it probably is Diego Costa's to lose. And remember also, Diego Costa is very well rested, given that he didn't mm -hmm. play at all in the first half of the season. Why on Spain winning the World Cup? That number nine, I think that's a position of concern. Uh, I think it's pretty evident that everybody feels Diego Costa, it's his job to lose. But is nobody worried about Diego Costa playing in a tournament with VAR? Uh, this is a player with his temperament that is a liability. And if you haven't experienced what VAR is, all of a sudden you go into a setting where Diego Costa does what he usually does, the bag of tricks off the ball, and it can be caught on camera. This worries me if I'm Spain. Is it as simple as that? Because they don't have a number nine? Just out and out number nine, they won't win the yeah, World Cup? Yeah, I, I, I do. I, I mean, Doga, this is a fantastic <laughs> Spain squad from back to front. But at the highest level, when you were looking for those small differences between getting to a semi-final, getting to a final, and winning a final, I think it comes down to not just a good proven striker, it's a clinical finisher. And I just don't think Spain have that. Go on, Gav. It, go on, sorry, Steve. Go on, Gav. I was going to say, who, is, who, who are the reigning world champions right now? Germany. Germany? Did they have a, a proven goal-scoring number nine? At the last World Cup, did they, they have a, goal a, a stellar out-and-out centre-forward? Do, you know, do you know the thing is, though, Gab? I mean, I, I can't argue with that statement, but at the end of the day, when we're talking about Argentina, Brazil, Germany and Spain, is Spain really going to have 70% of the ball? You know, they, they'll beat most teams because of the possession, and that's how you can end up with a Fabregas playing centre-forward, because you've got so many players forward, you've got the ball so much... When it comes down to those four big, big teams, is there going to be that much of a difference in the possession stakes? And that's, and they, that's they, where having the they, goal they, scorer, they, in my opinion, comes in the most. The thing for me as well is, and I accept Gab's, uh, Gab's parallel, but Germany are Germany. And Germany, regardless of who they, they call on, seem to have a way of getting it done that nobody else in the world can emulate. And you don't know, but you compare nobody else in the world to Germany because of that. Cap? I, I, I don't know. I mean, look, <laughs> Germany have a tremendous record. Hats off to them. Uh, but again, you look at the last, what, five, six, seven major tournaments, uh, Spain's record is certainly comparable uh, to Germany's. And in fact, I, I was just thinking about it there. If you want to talk, uh, if you want to create some sort of parallel with, with 2014 with these two teams, um, you know, it's Spain who have the experienced high-end center backs. Spain also have a tremendous goalkeeper, the way Germany did uh, four years ago. Spain also have a, a very good midfield, possibly a better midfield uh, than Germany did four years ago. So I, I don't know. I wouldn't be so hung up on this idea that 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 you need a proven goal scorer to 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 win to win a tournament. Welcome into Extra Time. As always, thank you very much for your questions as the countdown continues. The World Cup, boys.
You're excited. They've got ten, men, <laughs> ten more days. I'm going to preview everything. Think it on. <laughs> Who is more crucial to their team? Messi or LeBron? LeBron. <laughs> yes. That's a good one, actually. LeBron. LeBron continues to get to NBA Finals with four guys he found somewhere hanging out in a pub. I'm convinced of it. Hey, wow. You can't convince me that J.R. Smith wasn't found hanging out in a pub. Where do you stand on the uh, LeBron Jordan debate, Shane? I'm a Jordan fan. Right. So I'm going to go with Jordan just. But I do, as an example, I don't think Jordan can get to NBA Finals with this Cavs team. Oh. You know in the book, basketball. Yes, yeah. Just some right, let me ask you, you this. Then. You should have seen me on the cruise. I'm going to. I'm going to. On the cruise. I'm going to cruise cruise through with this question, Boom. right? Okay. So without Messi, mm. Argentina mm. don't get the World Cup. Right? Agreed. Is this a basketball question? Oh. Just answer the question. Without Messi, right? Yeah. Argentina don't get to the World Cup. They don't get to the World Cup. Well, oh, considering what he did. Oh, well. well, he's the only reason they actually qualified, well, right? Yeah. He's the reason they play that way, I think. Hold on. Is somebody going to disagree with that statement? If Messi, had, if Messi doesn't play for Stevie. Argentina... Gab, yeah. Gab does. Yeah, thank you, Gab. No, he disagrees. I'm a, a very knowledgeable he's, man. No, he dis he's disagreeing with you. He's disagreeing with you. So you're telling me that Argentina would have qualified for this World Cup if Messi hadn't played? Well, uh, Stevie, if, if, if Messi... If Messi had somehow disappeared and been replaced by nothing, then yeah, maybe they wouldn't have qualified for the World Cup. But well, do you know if what? Messi had never existed See, and they'd gone through the entire qualifying campaign with with Dybala or or, or Aguero or somebody else filling that role and they would have played put. differently, I think there's a very good chance that they still would have got to the World Cup. See, here's the problem. If you'd actually listened to the whole question I was going to ask Shaq, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have wasted all this time. Oh, oh no, you didn't ask me the question. <laughs> well, how, can, how, can, how can Gab listen to the whole I question? Get a well, well, you have a basketball because, question. Because you're not piping in. No, no because right. you, you, are, you ask a question, the first half of which we disagreed with. Here's the question. So, <clears throat> Messi doesn't play for Argentina. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, Gaz. Look at that. Sorry, they don't qualify, sorry. right? If LeBron <laughs> doesn't play for Cleveland Cavaliers, mm -hmm. would they still have qualified for the playoffs? Never. For the playoffs? Yeah. Or for the finals? The playoffs. I don't know if they're qualified for the playoffs. Well, that's the question I'm asking you. What do you mean you don't? They know? wouldn't be in the fourth straight final versus a, Golden State. That was a bully esque answer, by the way. I was kind well, of... I don't care. I'm, I'm not, I don't care if they don't qualify. <laughs> That's the question. <laughs> I'm, I'm still not quite sure what the question, the question is. is. With so, so Messi doesn't play for Argentina, they wouldn't have qualified for the World Cup. Correct. Agreed. Yes. <laughs> if LeBron doesn't play for Cleveland, <laughs> do they get to the playoffs? And that was the question I'm asking you. And the answer is yes or no. How do you want me to answer? <laughs> Yes, Steve. Gab, where do you stand on this? Who's more crucial to their team, Messi or LeBron? I, I would suggest that LeBron is more crucial to the Cleveland Cavaliers than Lionel Messi is to Argentina. Stevie's got a question for you. It's a different <laughs> sport. There's only five people out there. You know what? Argentina have other good strikers. It seems pretty clear cut to me. Huh? Yeah. It's it's LeBron without a doubt. I mean, fourth straight final versus Golden State. <laughs> if LeBron's not there, Cleveland isn't relevant in any factor. So it's got to be LeBron. How come Zidane has to disagree? <laughs> just ask the question. How come Zidane has to switch to a different team to prove himself, while Messi can stay in the same club and be the goat? Oh, I think he has a one for Gab, isn't it? <laughs> oh no, that, that's, that's this is no. From, this is from Craig. That's for Craig. Friday, that's he's one saying, for Craig. He's saying basically that Zidane has to go to a team and pick them up by the scruff of their neck and yeah. drag them to a title. Then he can be talked about as a great ah. manager. Oh wow. Well. Nobody agreed with Craig, so it's not, not a good question for this. And then panel. Craig said cherry picking a lot. And so Alex Ferguson. <laughs> for about 10 minutes. This is not quite, that's no question for this panel. That's okay. one for Craig. Gab, why is everybody underestimating Belgium to win the World Cup? Hazard, Lukaku, De Bruyne, Mertens, those are big names that can potentially make a Lukaku. big run. Lukaku? What do you guys think? 
Um, I, I'm not underestimating them. I mean, I, I was one of the first people here in England to write about the golden generation. Oh, and, there we go. And so yeah. I kind of have yes, a lot of yeah. value in the fact that they yeah. actually yeah. win a major yeah. tournament. Yeah. Although, it, that, that did for you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well done. I, uh, <laughs> I mean, given that... Given the team that the team that I n normally support decided to uh, sit this tournament out to uh, give somebody else a chance to win it, since we've already won it four times, um, <laughs> there might be a little part of me that actually uh, bleeds Red Devil. That said, the reason people doubt Belgium is because everybody's been traumatized by the memory of Mark Vilmot in the oh, last couple wow. tournaments, and and you know they've been replaced by Roberto. I I actually think Roberto. Martinez, our, our former colleague, is, is, is a good coach, and, and I think they'll be a lot better. But a lot of people don't seem to share that, especially defensively. I think there's also a big question for me with Alderweireld in the sense that we're not sure what condition he's going to be in. You know, it's not easy when, when you miss all that time on the pitch getting back to the level where, where you want to be at. When did you have Belgium in your World Cup, I think? Uh, I had them actually in the semis. Uh, they're in the third place game versus Spain. Wow. They uh, come in fourth place. So who do they beat on that run? Who, which big team? Who do they feel? Oh, who are busy? That's a good one. Let's see. They oh, beat oh, on their go. run. Oh, there's notes on there. Oh, so where, where do you have Brazil going on? And they beat Brazil. Really? Belgium to beat Brazil. In the quarters. In the quarters. Yeah, Brazil in the quarters. Well, so they get knocked out. They failed then. If Brazil gets knocked out. No. Oh. Belgium. Oh. Well, if they want to win the World Cup and you get knocked out before winning the World Cup. Yes, a failure. Any other questions, Stephen? <laughs> and, and I, would, I would just say that, uh, by the way, Matt Vilmos didn't kick a ball. No, he didn't. Oh, yeah. He never kicked a ball. Huh? Is that your defending a fellow coach? I'm just the saying. Coaches union? That's what it sounded um, like. I'm just saying, the players, the players at the end of the day are the ones that make it happen mm. on the field of play. And so far, Belgium have not made it happen. That's it. We are done. ESPN FC returns to your screens tomorrow. Plenty, of course, of plenty. What am I saying? Yeah, what? Plenty of World Cup talk, of course, to come over the next few days. Okay. All right. Can we redo that? Oh, we can't. All no. Right. Oh. Plenty of World Cup talk to come over the next few days. <laughs> It's interesting at the full time whistle, her boos were coming out from some parts of the crowd, the Mexican crowd. Why? It's, it's not the first time. Juan Carlos Osorio is probably the most hated individual right now Ooh. in the country of Mexico. Wow. 47 hey. matches, 47 different lineups. They feel the team doesn't have quite a definitive style and it just stays away from the World Cup. It is worrying a lot of people, fans, press included. Juan Carlos Osorio. All this chaos amongst them, there's a method to his madness. The thing is, only he and his players know. The players are 100% behind him. Right. But lots of uncertainty when it comes to the fan base and the press. And the fact that the last two games, they're having trouble putting the ball in the back of the net. This last game versus Scotland, it was four or five clear opportunities. They could only score on goal once. Against Wells in the, at the Rose Bowl, they had about another five or six clear-cut opportunities. They couldn't score. There is a certain lack of wor or a certain worry ahead of the World Cup that Oribe Peralta scored three goals last season. Chicharito Hernandez at West, uh, at West Ham wasn't a prominent player. Raul Jimenez of Benfica also wasn't a prominent player. He was a bench player. So there is uncertainty when it comes to that number nine position. Uh, the squad, of course, was trimmed down to, to confirm the 23. Would you agree with the decisions that were made? Well, they're at 24 now. If you look at the players who left, it was Osvaldo Alanis, Jesus Molina, who was the only natural defensive midfielder, and Jurgen Dam. This is troubling because he cut the players. He made it public an hour before game time versus Scotland. So it leaves a lot to be said about why he would do that, the timing of it. It's 24, 23 have to be uh, named. Right. It's one player. So who's the one player who's... Eric Gutierrez. But the fact that he's still on there tells me that Andres Guardado, their team captain, isn't 100% yet. And that right. is troublesome. He had a procedure after his season at Real Betis. But you don't have a procedure. You don't go under the knife unless it's absolutely necessary. And he's fighting against the clock right now. So that is very worrisome if you're a Mexican national team fan. Uh, let's just remind you, shall we, of Mexico's group. I think you've got them going through. I do. And I think back to the predictor. Neither of you, did you boys have Mexico going through to the nope. next round? Why? Uh, because Mexico plays Sweden in the last game in the group, and I think that'll be a, a big, a big, that'll be a decider. That's the decider. Whoever yes. goes through with Germany, and and the reason Sweden have got to the World Cup is because when it's mattered, they've gotten a result. Right. They're not the greatest team to watch, but they don't give in in a way. Uh, they'll nick a goal, 
And I'm not just quite so sure about Mexico. Again, I don't, I don't really trust them. I'm not sure what I'm going to get. Whereas with Sweden, you know exactly what you're going to get. That's why I've got Sweden going through. I, I had Mexico coming out of the group. I, I'm just not at all convinced by, by the Sweden team. I think they, Mexico... They, they, they stopped Italy from qualifying. I, and Holland. I, I, I don't... What, what you saw from, from Sweden all qualifying campaign long, I think they, they rode their luck. They got... They, they had a huge slice of fortune, for example, against France. And they, they got in through the side door. I, I think that Mexico, for all, for all the concern going into this tournament, Mexico come good at the, on the day. And I, I think they get out of the group. I don't think they go much further, well, but I think they get out of the group. Can I ask you a question? It, it, yes. Did, did people just want Osario to fail? That's what it seems like. They seems have a like real issue with Osorio being Colombia, not being Mexican, with the way that Osorio mm. does things. Now, you spoke about not knowing what this Mexican team can offer at the World Cup. That's the one thing. When it comes to Mexico at the World Cup, the one thing they can offer since 94 is getting out of the group. It's Brazil, Germany, Mexico since 94. Interesting points. When you take a look at the bookies' prices regarding who will be the player of the tournament, who will win the Golden Ball, Neymar favorites. Eight to one. Eight to one seems like a great bet, doesn't it? Yeah. Both of you think yeah. that Brazil are going to win the World Cup. Yeah. Surely, if they're going to do that, Neymar will probably be their best player. Well, if anybody was going to question Shaq and I, just look at that goal. I mean, he had no space at all. He had two defenders within, what, half a yard of him? And a goalkeeper? And nobody had any idea what he was trying to do, where he was going to go. He's cut inside, he's dummied one, he's got his shot off when there just didn't seem to be any time or space. And he's not 100% fit yet. What's he going to be like when he's 100%? But that's, that's the thing. If this Brazilian team wants to do anything of relevance in this World Cup, Neymar has to be fit. He has to be the Neymar that we see in this play because besides that goal, Neymar didn't do a, a lot. Oh my goodness! He didn't do it. Besides, it's a, it's a great goal. It's his first game for three a, months. <laughs> but that's the thing. Neymar is that good, and that's why he's eight to one. I tell you what, honestly, even if, do you know, even if Neymar wasn't fit and was going to miss this World Cup for some reason, I would still have Brazil as favourite. Yeah. Would you, Stevie? Did you see what they had on the? We we've been yeah. talking about Real Madrid and Liverpool and how yeah. Real Madrid can bring on Bale. Have you seen this, this bench that Brazil had today? Neymar, Firmino, Felipe Luiz, I, I, Tyson. I mean, Fred. they could put two teams out yeah. and compete in this World Cup. So, with Neymar, absolutely favourites. Without Neymar, I think they're still, still favourites. The, the, the timeline's looking good for Neymar, isn't it? Really? Yeah. He's been obviously out for three months, can bet himself in over the next few weeks ahead of the, the group stages where you don't even have to be 100% if you're Brazil. Yeah, and I think it, it works out perfectly in terms of timing, in terms of his rest. I, I think most importantly, and for me, as critical as I've been of Neymar for PSG, Neymar in the yellow of Brazil is completely different. He's far more mature. He's a team player. And most importantly, the players around him re recognize that he's a star and he's a talent, but don't kind of go into a shell as you see with Argentina, Lionel right. Messi. And I think that's why it, it's all coming together really nicely for Neymar, for Brazil, how they're, how they're football under Tite ever since they let go of, of, of Dunga. It's, it's, it's what we have come to know and expect of Brazil for the last 40 or 50 years. I think this Brazil side has got an aura of fun around them. They right. just look as though they're having a great time. They look as though they're a bunch of guys that have got together at the weekend to play some games and then go for a beer afterwards. This, uh, this, I mean, it's just, the chemistry is well, incredible. What team does that remind you of, Stephen? I, I was playing a couple <laughs> of those teams. I don't think they're going for the beers the way we did, but... The chemistry is clear and obvious, this, and, and, and that's half the battle. I, I think this Brazil team reminds you of, of Brazil teams of all in, with one difference, and that's between the sticks. Now, all of a sudden, oh. you, as good as you see Brazil playing, you see the old style, you see the swagger, and then you look at, at their options in goal... This, this is a far cry had from... To, had to be the goalkeeper. Yes. It had to be uh, Alisson, huh? Well, he's right, though. <laughs> Where, where's Alisson on, right where's, where's right right. on the golden ball list? And on my list, he's but right on there. Th <laughs> this could be, and maybe should be, Neymar's World Cup. Yeah. It should be, yes, without question. Are, we, are yes. we totally discrediting the French team or the German team? You talk about teams that can field Because you, you, let, Listen, you were the only one on this panel who didn't pick Brazil. Correct. I have, to win the World I Cup. have Germany beating France in the World Cup. Final. Where's the weakness? What's the problem? I... I think it's, Apart from Neymar not doing much, but I think it's, I think it's, to be quite honest, I think it's the uncertainty of Neymar. We still don't know how fit Neymar is going to be. It's all fun and games in a friendly. But until we see him at the World Cup, and we've seen this many times, 
Cristiano Ronaldo heading into the World Cup. He's not fit. How does Portugal perform? Not great. We've seen this plenty of times. He needs to show he's fit at the World Cup. He's going to breeze through the group stage. But after that, uh, you're going to have a Brazilian team that's going to face Disaster. France or can face Belgium. It's not going to be easy for this Brazilian team. And if and Neymar is not 100%. percent they have only got a choice if he doesn't play of Coutinho, Firmino, Villian. I mean, uh, the, the, that's the difference, and that's why this team will win it. The depth is incredible. And, and you know, Portugal without Ronaldo, and mm -hmm. Argentina without Messi. Yes. These are, Completely for me, these 100%. are two different, two different arguments completely. Because, as I said earlier, even without Neymar, this Brazil team, you don't want anything to do with them.